he had both legs functioning very well. One day, as he was going to work, he had a terrible accident that gave him a near-death experience. During treatment, doctors ended up cutting one of his legs, and that is the reason why he has one leg. The wife was given money as compensation, and she misused and wasted all the money. After feeling ashamed of what she did, she attempted killing him. Later, the wife left when they needed her the most. The firstborn Harriet is the one who now plays the mother's role. She dropped out of school so as to take care of the dad and other children. She's selling avocados so as to help her family. They now call her their mother. Meet this family. Sanita Mujani Ariet. Ariet, what do you want to do? It was a beautiful day. I woke up and went searching for what to feed my wife and these children. I worked in a mine site where we could extract different valuable minerals. As I was busy doing my daily job, a car lost control came from nowhere and hit me so badly that I found myself having a near-death experience. I nearly lost my life. But it was not my time, maybe. I was then rushed to the hospital. I had fatal injuries, then doctors started treating me. During the treatment process, they agreed that they had to remove one of my leg, which was seriously damaged. They did whatever they could, and God handled the rest. After a long time in the hospital, I recovered and went back home. I lived peacefully with my four children. She started changing behaviors unexpectedly. She started acting like someone who did not produce. She could no longer do her responsibilities as she was supposed to. By when I was at the hospital, she was given my compensation for the accident suffered at work. It was seven million. She took all the money they had given to us and took it away the day before I came from the hospital. Eric says the wife did not only want to take money but also wanted to take away his life. According to this single father of four, the wife attempted killing him at least five times only to be protected by God. For him to be still breathing is a miracle, he says. He survived the impossible. The wife spent all the money and came back to stressing this family. But this time, police were ready and they quickly arrested her. I spent three years at the hospital due to fatal injuries that I had that left one leg removed. And the second, which remained, also has some problems inside here. I feel too much pain and I would have returned to the hospital for the legs treatment, but I have no mean. I have many wounds here in the hip that did not recover. They are rotting from inside. Due to many wounds I have, I can't move properly. This man says that for him to go from one place to another is still a big problem. He can't crawl when going somewhere far. Like when going to the hospital, he has to hire people who will lift him up to there, then bring him back, or else see someone with a bicycle and ask him for the lift up to the hospital. I cannot walk with a clutch because the remaining leg is not strong enough to support movement. When I try standing, I shake too much, then realize my leg has some serious issues needed to be solved. Eric says that it's now five years since the wife left. And you understand that in one way or the other, life has been difficult for them. And more difficult because the father who would have taken care of the family no longer has legs. And providing for these children came to an end since the mother took and misused all the money they would be using this time. The man says the wife spent all seven million drinking beer and paying other men 
Now, life keeps on becoming difficult. And as days pass, they go on losing hope. They live by the support of good Samaritans who sometimes bring them cooked food and they eat. But eat wondering what will happen next, wondering whether the following day they'll be able to have what to eat. Three of my children got to school and the fourth became the mother. She took all the responsibilities of the mother as the firstborn. She did this so as to take maximum care to the family. Others go to school, she remains here, cooks for them and does other home activities. This girl who acts as the mother to these children is not even old. Problems forced her to take some serious life decisions, yet she's only 13. I stopped attending school two years ago. I was even smart in class, I could bring home good results. But by when I was in P4 and seeing that the mother left us, there needed someone to be here. There needed something to be done, my mother abandoned us. I left school so as to help in raising these children, though I'm also still young and I need to be raised. Harriet says she does everything possible to see whether her siblings eat. She fetches water for people and sells avocados so as to help them get what to feed on. And after all this, she has to return home early and prepare lunch so that after class, these siblings will go find food ready. She does allow to see her siblings and the father happy. This is the reason why the father says they now call her the mother, since she's doing what their mother would have done. So far, I have a few customers who buy my avocados daily. This helps me get rice and we eat. Though I'm still young, I have to take full responsibilities. Mom left us when I had 8 years. I'm now 13 and I'm the oldest among my siblings. So I have to set a good example for them so that they will see a good image of the mother they never got. They have to take me as their mother and I'm ready to be here for them. Before the mother left, she had developed a bad habit of drinking too much and messing up each and everything. Though she does everything for them, she says she needs education. She wants to study so as to have a better tomorrow. She says there has to be a person here who takes care of them. In case they have such a person, she will return to school. She was always a good student and teachers liked how smart she was. She tells us how the mother attempted murdering the father but failed. Mom used to beat dad and one day she planned killing him. She came heading straight to the father with the hammer and was aiming for the head. And I came out of nowhere, grabbed the hammer and threw it away. That is how the dad survived. He screamed for help and many people crowded to our house. Our mother was then taken to the prison, though she was released a couple of months after that happened. Then she went away. We no longer see her, but we don't even want to see her here again. She says she is willing to go back to school, but on one condition. She does not want to see her siblings starve to death since the husband cannot do anything. She says if they had food and someone else to handle the rest, she can go back to school. And the dad cannot move clearly. He crows and says if given a wheelchair, he can go and search for a living. You can help this family by contributing via a GoFundMe link found in description and pinned in top comment. Bad things happen to good people all the time. It sucks. It's not fair. But then much of life isn't fair. It's how you live that matters. It's how you deal with bombs on the road. Life isn't fair. No matter what life throws your way, no matter how unfair it may seem, refuse to play the victim. Refuse to be ruled by fear, pessimism and negativity. Refuse to quit. 
Be a warrior and work through whatever life throws your way with courage, love, positivity and continually push forward. Because you are a survivor of the unfairness of life. You are stronger than you think and you are capable of achieving far more than you believe. Thank you for watching. I'm Elijah and this is Afrimax English.